Hello, welcome to a hopefully reasonably quick video about jQuery UI effects. Um, so the jQuery UI effects are extensions uh, largely on what jQuery does in terms of animation uh, to include some other ideas that are just really helpful ways of achieving a lot with not too much uh, actual code. So what we're wanting to do, it's, it's mostly about transitions, I should say. So let's, uh, let's add some transitions to this kind of prisoner idea uh, that I've been working on uh, when working with jQuery UI. So I'm just going to continue from where I was up to in the previous video. Uh, if you don't have that uh, in the notes for this uh, particular video, there are uh, all of the bits and pieces that you need to put together your, um, your prisoner example yourself. Um, but just as a reminder, uh, I'll just return to it here. Uh, we've got this, this experience where we've got a prisoner who is draggable around on the screen. They're contained within the walls of their prison, and there's an escape tunnel which, if I drag them onto it, they disappear, uh, escaping forever. So I just want to add some effects to this so that we can get some sense of how the jQuery effects uh, actually work. So let us begin. So the effects are listed down here. Uh, again. We're mostly going to be working from this idea of um, the demos and not worry quite so much about the API unless we want something really specific that we want to achieve. So one of the big things that jQuery UI adds that I think a lot of people miss in uh, the core jQuery is color animation. So let's look at that first. How does color animation work? Uh, well, let's toggle the effect here and see what it does. It's kind of, I mean, it's, it's sort of what you might expect, right? It's, able, it's doing jQuery animation in the standard way, except that it is also now animating from one color to another. So it started out in some sort of whitish color and it went red uh, over time. So again, if we're dealing with these demos, we immediately should view source and get a sense of how that's being accomplished. And it turns out that it is relatively straightforward. Uh, it's just here. So we can see, uh, importantly, that it's just using the standard jQuery animate method, right? Uh, this is the same thing from jQuery. It works in the same way. The only difference uh, is that you are now allowed to add colors into the properties that you want to animate. So background color here and color. So it's changing to a red color and a white text. Uh, and other than that, it works in the same way, right? You target the thing you want to animate you call the animate method and you provide an object that contains all of the properties to animate. Could be things like width uh, or font size, but now it can include color-based properties. Uh, and then of course you need to provide a duration of the animation uh, if you want to do that. So uh, let's just you know, apply that to our prisoner briefly uh, just so that we can use it. So if I want my prisoner not just to gain an underline, but maybe to change color while I'm uh, dragging them around, uh, I should animate that color because that will look nice. That'll look nicer than just uh, setting it immediately. So here in my start drag and stop drag um, myth, uh, event handlers, I should add in this idea of animation. So let's do that. So when we're in here, we know that this refers to the prisoner. So I'll continue using this. And then I know that I can just use the, the jQuery animate uh, method. And the first thing that I provide is a list of properties. And I'm just going to animate one property, which is the color property. And I'm just going to animate it to uh, another, another hex value. Uh, I could just, I, I almost wanted to type something in randomly, but I'll stick with something that I know might work. So here we're going to animate the, the color, which is the text color of the prisoner, which starts out black, to this color here, which is like a, a blue color, right? And of course, we know that we also should provide some kind of duration. Uh, I'm going to say 750 milliseconds to animate that. Um, so let's go look at that. So we're saying animate the color to this to this blue color over 750 milliseconds. What does that look like? As soon as I start dragging, the prisoner animates to this blue color that I have, right? If I let go, uh, it stays blue because I haven't undone it. So in that case, maybe I'll undo it over here, right? So same thing, this.animate. I'm going to animate the color property, color, color, color property, and I'm going to animate it just to back to black. The prisoner goes back to black, just like uh, Amy Winehouse. And 750 milliseconds for that as well. So the same, basically the same thing to a different, to, to back to its default color, right? So I drag, it turns blue, I let go, it goes back to black. Drag, 
And that's just, that's just sort of nice, right? It's sort of a satisfying little color effect that we can make uh, our program a teensy little bit more sophisticated. And again, just thinking about like, what would it take to write that code ourselves? It's horrifying. It's horrifying to think of what it would, what it would require for us to animate that ourselves. We have some idea, um, but you know, I'm really, really glad that I don't have to do that uh, on my own. Okay, so that's, that's really one of the big, big things uh, that we get from jQuery UI is this color animation uh, option. We can be happy about that. I just want to touch on a couple more things uh, just so you can sort of know some of the stuff that's available. All of these things here, as you might be able to see, they're kind of mostly around transitions, right? Like the transition of adding a class, uh, the transition of hiding something on the, the document, the transition of removing a class, showing, switching a class, toggling, toggling a class. They're all things where an element changes and you might want to animate that change instead of um, just having it immediately switch, which is uh, generally how jQuery uh, core works. So another really nice one uh, to know about is add class and remove class. And again, this is like animate in the sense that it, uh, it's just extending something that jQuery core does with animation. So again, if we run the effect, it's kind of, it's kind of hideous, um, but there you go, that's what it does. Um, and again, how does it do it? How is it uh, making this, this text animate to a different um, kerning, I guess looks like what it's doing there. If we go and look, it's very, it's very simple again. Uh, it's just this one liner here and you can see it's just using add class, right? So add class is um, just the standard jQuery core uh, method that lets us add a CSS class to any element. So it's targeting the element and adding a class. First parameter we can see, first argument we can see here is what class to add in a string. They're adding, it's called new class. I kind of wish that they had a better name how long to animate it over. This is what's new, right? Uh, normally add class doesn't have other, other parameters here. So we can say how long to animate to this new class. And if we need to, there's a callback. And as you might imagine, uh, this callback is called when the animation is completed. So if you need to, you can trigger something to happen when it's completed. Uh, let's just focus on adding a class, uh, but animating it over time. So let's do the same thing. Um, but instead of this, these blocks here, let's just use a CSS class to define what the prisoner looks like when they're being dragged. This is a much nicer way of separating out the visuals and the kind of uh, the functional aspects of our program. So let's head back over to our CSS and let's make a CSS class because we know that we're going to want to add and remove a class. And we'll call it prisoner dragging. So this is a class that's going to apply to the prisoner while it is being dragged. So we're going to add it while it's being dragged and take it away when the dragging stops. And here we can specify those, those things that we were doing before, right? So it's going to have a color of, uh, let's just use the same thing for consistency, 4444FF. And it's going to have a text decoration uh, of underline. We don't need to define what the prisoner looks like um, by default because uh, when we add this class, it'll add these, these properties to the prisoner. So it will change color and uh, have the underline. And when we remove the class, it'll go back to the way it was, right? So we get that kind of for free instead of having to explicitly animate back to black and no underline, which is a, a big advantage to, to doing it this way with a class. So we've got this class. Um, now, instead of doing this stuff, we can use uh, add class and remove class when we stop. So and when we start, so when we start, we will say this, which is the prisoner dot add class and the name of the class, right? What's the class called? It's called prisoner dragging. So when you start dragging, you add the prisoner dragging class to the prisoner. And when you stop dragging, you, uh, you remove it. My goodness. You remove the prisoner dragging class. Um, currently we're not using the animation thing, right? But let's just make sure that this has the same effect that we were seeing before. So go over here, we start dragging, it becomes blue and underlined, we let go and it stops. So now we're using CSS to do it, but we've lost the animation. And if we were using core CSS, um, we wouldn't be able to animate it. But now we know that in jQuery UI, we can add a duration here, like 750 milliseconds. There we go. And this will now, instead of just immediately switching on this class here, it will animate from the current CSS properties to the CSS properties in this class and vice versa for remove class. So now if I select the prisoner, it comes on gradually. And if I let go, it goes away gradually. It comes on, it goes away. 
Beautiful. You can see that the underline does not animate, right? That's It's just because text decorations are not animatable. There are ways to animate an underline um, by doing something with borders uh, or even maybe the underline, the text decoration color, um, but I'm not going to get into that. There's, there's, there's a way to do everything uh, in CSS, but um, we don't want to get too lost. So that's it. That's how that works, right? So that's what add class and remove class in jQuery UI. They get this ability to be animated. Uh, that's actually true of these other aspects here, like hide and show, right? That's just show and hide from jQuery core, which are normally instantaneous. Uh, but now with uh, jQuery UI, you can animate, animate it to, to being hidden, animate to being shown, um, and so forth. So very cool. Um, However, there's one more thing that uh, we definitely want to look at just because it's pretty fun. And that is a brand new method uh, that we get with jQuery UI called effect. So let's go and look at effect. Now, the effect demo is uh, a little bit confusing, I would argue, uh, but it's, it's, it's super cool, right? So here we have a list of effects. There's blind, so let's run that effect. Very nice. So when we run the blind effect, you can see the thing disappears by kind of wrapping up like a blind. Uh, that would be a good thing. That's you know that's clearly that's a way to hide something, right? And in fact, it's like slide up uh, is in jQuery, standard jQuery. Uh, we've got uh, what else do I like? Explode on the effect. So that's another way to to make something disappear, right? You could hide something with the explode effect, and it would explode. That's very nice too. Uh, clearly, you know you've got something like a fade. Uh, my favorite is actually the shake effect. This is not a transition to make something go away. It's just a thing that happens. So it just shakes, right? Shaking, uh, just likes to shake it like a Polaroid picture. So let's add a shaking um, animation effect to our prisoner. So how is it doing this shake effect? It's unfortunately, it's a little bit unclear because they've made this big interface. The code that they have here is a little bit harder to read uh, than we might affect, than we might affect, than we might like. You can see the line here that's using the effect method. And you can see that it's saying, well, here's the selected effect. Here are the options. Here's how long to do it over. This is just, I'm, I'm reading this and making assumptions. Here's the callback uh, to the function to call when it's finished. Um, but it's less easy to kind of comprehend there. So one thing to notice uh, is down here, there's a list of all of the effects. Uh, that's that list that we're reading on the, the, the page. These values are the actual names of the effect. That you want to do. You can see that they're lowercase importantly, right? So this shake there is just called shake in lowercase. Um, but what this makes me think is we, we probably should take a quick look at the API documentation, right? Um, now the API documentation just for the effect method tells us the basic idea which is like what's the effect called, what options do you want to use with it, how long should it take, and hit give it a function to call when it completes. Or you can also just specify everything in an options object. Um, which I think is a nice way to do things. So we can also say effect and then provide an object that, for example, provides the effect name uh, as in the option, uh, the property called effect. The duration is an, a property called duration. The thing, the function to call when it's done is incomplete, uh, etc. There's also an easing option here if you like uh, playing around with animations. Uh, and here we get a slightly clearer uh, example. So if I click here, that bounced. Uh, there's a, at least a simpler example here, right? You select the element and you say use the bounce effect and apply it at a speed of slow. Um, again, it's still pretty limited. So what if we wanted to know more about this idea of shaking? Uh, yeah, at this point, it might, it's probably a good idea to search for shake. Uh, oh, that's, uh, that's not at all what I, uh, what I expected to see in there. Uh, let me, no, nope, okay, useless. So. In that case, <laughs> that was less helpful than I had hoped. Let's go look for it manually then, I suppose. Let's go look at effects and let's search for shaking down here. Well, because you can see that the different effects are listed, right? There's the explode effect. And if I search down far enough, I should find the shake effect. And the good thing here is that I get some specific information about how the shake effect works, including some additional options I might want to use such as the direction to shake in, left or right, or up or down, so I can shake on a particular axis, which is nice. Uh, the distance to shake, like how violently 
should it shake in distance and how many times should it shake um, during the duration the default is and you can see the defaults here right left 20 is the distance 20 pixels which they should tell you and three times um, and here we get another like not amazing example right this is just saying just shake so let's at least do that that seems useful so you select the thing and you apply shake to it so we we, we at least see that you can just apply the effect named shake so it's a, like the prisoner shake so where should we do that? Let's do it at the top. So the prisoner kind of shakes. I, like, I have this idea that they're shaking in anger at being trapped or they're like, you know, rebelling against uh, being trapped or something. So let's do it at the very beginning. So we say prisoner, we select the prisoner and we say, I want to apply an effect and I want to apply the effect called shake. So what is that gonna do? It's gonna shake the prisoner. So we missed it because uh, the page reloaded, but if we reload the page, they shake. And they look reasonably upset. I don't love, like I don't feel like this, this animation is perfect and so this is where we need to start kind of actually playing around with some of the specifics uh, of, of the shaking animation if we want to get into a bit more depth uh, on this. And so we saw back in the, the main uh, effect documentation that we can actually supply all of the information to effect in an object, which I prefer, I think it's cleaner. So here we would specify the effect name here, it's shake. So this is now uh, the same thing uh, that it was before. Uh, but we also saw that we can, oh, and we can also affect the duration, I guess, so that we're not affecting, you know, we're not specifically, um, we're not specifically shaking some kind of default amount. So let's make it shake for two seconds. It's a little bit more sustained rage. The thing that happens now, uh, if we go over and look at it, they became kind of sluggish, like uh, I don't know what happened to them, but they became sluggish. The reason for that is because there's a default number of shakes, um, they're still, it's still just that default number of three times taking place over the course of two seconds. So because that's a longer duration than the default, we get this really sedate, slidey shake. Um, but we know from the documentation of the shake effect that if we want to, uh, we can specify a different number of times. The number of times to shake is a property of this called times. So let's go change that as well. Let's set times to what? 20. 20? Seems excessive. Maybe 10. That's, I, don't want to, I don't want to go too, too nutsy. So they're going to shake 10 times in 2 seconds. So let's go look at that. It's good, but now it also feels like it's a bit too slidey. So I kind of don't want it to shake so far in either direction. So again, if I go look at the documentation, uh, we have a distance where we can specify how far uh, this element is going to shake out to the left and right. The default is 20 pixels, so maybe if I cut that in half. So I'm going to say that the distance is 10 pixels, uh, just to tighten it up a little bit. Maybe even smaller, let's make it 7 pixels. So now they're, I don't know, it's just it's still not, it's, I'm not liking it. So I'm going to increase the number of times to, to, to 15 and see if that's a little bit more impressive. Yeah, that's looking better, right? Like that, ah, oh, let me out. I want to get out of here. Yeah, perfect. So that's, 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 that's really nice. So they shake and then we're ready to kind of start interacting with our page. However, something has happened. I cannot drag the prisoner anymore. And this is, this is just a really important problem uh, to run into. Uh, sometimes the different effects in jQuery UI can conflict with each other. Um, in this instance, and I, I, I don't know what's going on literally down in the code, but the shake effect that we're applying at the beginning of our program, clearly it's doing something to the position uh, of the prisoner. Presumably it's using CSS. Uh, but this is conflicting with the draggable, which needs to do something else with its position, right? And so my guess is that when the shaking ends, the prisoner uh, gets reset to a setting that's then incompatible with dragging, which kind of sucks. Uh, so what we really want to do then is for, to have the prisoner just start dragging, only be able to be dragged after the shaking has finished. So we kind of get this, the shaking is like an introduction to the page, like this prisoner wants to get out. It's kind of communicating without words, uh, except that there are words, uh, and then we can uh, drag them. Uh, so let's, let's do that and see if that fixes our problem. Uh, this just in, I know that it's going to fix our problem. So this is the thing here that makes the prisoner draggable, right? And we want this to happen after the effect has completed. So let's do that. So I, I th think we're going we're gonna to get into kind of hot water if we try and just do this all with anonymous functions. So I'm going to 
cut that and I'm going to make a function called make prisoner draggable, draggable, and I'm going to paste that stuff in there. So this function make prisoner draggable is the thing that triggers all of the draggableness of the prisoner. And then I know that in my effect, one of the properties I have is called complete. And that's going to be a function that gets called when the effect has finished. Um, and importantly, therefore, when it's done all of its weird CSS stuff, uh, and only then will we call make prisoner draggable. And that way we'll avoid the conflict between the effect and the draggable nature of, of the prisoner. So that means that when we begin, I can't drag the prisoner while they're shaking, but when they finish, now, now, now they've become draggable, right? And now they can escape through the tunnel and, and the journey kind of continues, right? So that's a really nice effect. Um, I think that shaking is super fun. Obviously we saw that there were others. We saw blind, so maybe we could kind of finalize this, this amazing escape if the tunnel kind of vanishes as well as the prisoner. Um, so I remember that we saw this idea of hiding, uh, hiding elements with the transition. So let's go back. I'm um, just going back through this documentation to find the hide effect. So here's the hide effect. Uh, let's go look at that. So we want to hide the tunnel. So if I run, for example, the blind effect, that's really nice. Like the element kind of disappears uh, by kind of wrapping itself up. It's got a Looney Tunes kind of vibe to it. So how are they accomplishing um, that? Well, it's the same basic idea uh, that we saw with the effect method, which is that we say hide and then we provide the name of the effect. And so let's not, let's not get too complicated. Let's just, um, let's just do the same basic idea with the effect. We'll just specify um, the name of the effect and maybe a duration. So when, so this is the bit here, right, where we're handling something being dropped onto the escape tunnel. So here's the function that gets called. So we know that this removes the prisoner. Uh, and then we also want to remove the tunnel. So we know that the tunnel is this. Um, because it's the droppable and we can hide it. So this would be the simplest version, right? We can just hide it when uh, the prisoner jumps onto it uh, And that will that will work. So prisoners there shakes with rage they escape bloop, and then everybody's just gone um, But it'd be nicer if there was an effect on that hiding uh, of the tunnel So let's add that in so instead of just saying hide we know that now in jQuery UI We can specify an options object and we can specify an effect and we'll use that blind effect and just for good measure, let's add a duration to make it kind of snappy. There's a kind of a quick zip, kind of a blind, like a Looney Tunes thing. So hide no longer uh, is just like a, you know, it's either it's on or it's off. It can be a thing that's animated and it can be a thing that's animated with a specific effect, like an explosion or in this case, a blind wrapping up. And we can set those sa that same idea of those different properties depending on the effect that we're using. So let's do that and take a look. So the prisoner is done shaking. I can drag them, I drop them on the tunnel, boop, and then the tunnel kind of zips up and disappears, which is exactly what I wanted, and I feel like my birthday has finally come. And now the prison is empty, the prisoner has escaped, and the tunnel has been hidden, and the guards uh, who are not there I have no idea what happened, and such is the beauty of jQuery UI and jQuery UI effects. So I'll see you in the next video. This continues to be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying working with this corporate library in this particular way. So see you next time.